This is the story of my father. My dad would tell me years later that sometimes it takes something bigger than our egos to get our attention. We try so hard to run away from things that we forget who we are in the process. Well, my dad remembered who he was that Christmas. This is his story. Hey John, I wanted to let you know that I'm still praying for us. Things will get better with prayer, I'm sure. But I am proud of you. I wish you didn't have to be gone so much. I, I end up staring at your side of the bed a lot since you got this job. But you know where I put it, right? I always put it in your right pocket. Please just pray, please. Remember who guides your hands. I'm praying for that poor boy. Yeah. Dr. Harper? Yeah. They're ready for you. Miracle hands, right? That's why they asked for the best. Hello? Dr. Harper. 
You asked us to inform you of any opening at the Town Square Family Clinic? Our assistant said that the envelope came today. Tim? Yes, sir. You don't have to call me sir or doctor. And that's for people who didn't know me in high school. It's nice hearing your voice. It's been a long time. So this is the uh, clinic on the square and on Main Street? If you want the job, you can have it. Even if this is your old hometown. It sure would be nice to have you back, buddy. Yeah. I'll take a look at it. Sure. Uh, oh, great. We just didn't know of a person of your caliber would want something like this. Well, vacation starts in a couple hours, so can I think about it over the holidays? Oh, yes, of course. Okay, then. I'll call you later. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy holidays. It's your brother, Matt. Look, um, Dad passed away late last night. We're getting everything ready for the visitation. And uh, I would love for you to be there. Mom needs us right now. Let's just put our differences aside. So good. No matter how horrible that man was, losing just makes me think a lot. Well, that man was your father. I'm really glad you're home finally, though. This job's taking more out of me and us than I thought it would. You can't save them all, John. I'm the best. You're not God, though. But I am the best. You put my name in at the clinic on the square? Less stress. Yeah, I guess. Will you pray about it? I'll think about it. Family comes first. Remember that. I thought if I stayed away and worked, I wouldn't become like him. But now you're never here. It's hard to raise two kids by yourself and without the man that you love. Can we not talk about this right now? Sorry. I understand about losing parents, you know. I'm sorry. It just makes you think, doesn't it? I mean, when I lost mine, it shook my reality to the core. And then with Hope's parents, same way. I'm glad we could be there for her, though. Me too. And you were there for me, so I want to be there for you, too. I know. I just have never been that person before you know, that needed the help. I know you haven't. Oh, he was such a horrible man. I know he was horrible when you were little. But then he came to Christ. He gave up the booze and it was quite opposite from the man that you once knew. Please don't get all spiritual on me right now. I'm sorry. Now, why the job on the square? You know, of all jobs. It's always been home, John. The hours are great. You'd have more time to spend with your family. I know it's not as much money as you make now, but if that's your only dilemma, then I know about 99% of the world who would take that issue. I don't know why you're always trying to keep up with the Joneses. You know, I think they actually live next door and are trying to keep up with us now. 
It's never been about the job or the money. Yeah, I can't talk about all this right now. Hello? Please help, John. Hello? Are you working at Dad's store right now? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? How's the store doing? It's good. I'll be paying you back soon. Got a lot of bills we're going through right now. Store's in trouble already. I didn't say that. Do you need more money to keep it afloat? No. I said I will be paying you back soon. I'll believe it when I see it. Look, do we really want to talk about Dad's store right now? Why are you calling, John? When's the funeral? In the next day or so, because of Christmas. Are you coming? I'm thinking about it. I don't know if I can do the funeral. I understand. I really do. See you then. Yeah, see you then. your deal, Caleb? He failed his last test. Again. He's in homeschool, Dad. Homeschool. Think about that. You're a smart kid. What's going on? She's messing with you. I'm not failing. I get all A's. I put them on the fridge over there. I told you I'd get him to notice. Wow. Thanks for that. I do notice. You never come to any of my competitions. Me winning awards. My recitals. My theater productions. Me going into high school. Nice try but you aren't in high school yet. Really? Mom, he doesn't know that I'm in high school. Go easy on your dad today, Hope. I need more extra credit, Mom. Life is about getting ahead, like Dad always says. Caleb, it's time to get a grip. Put your stuff up and just get a grip, please. What's wrong with him? He wants to be like someone you know. Choose work, right, Dad? Yeah, OK. Do what your mom says, please. I'm just acting like you. Nothing ever seems to please you. Wow. I get the point already. I work too much. Work too much? You're non-existent. Kids, go get ready to go. Work is never done. Caleb, you are not taking your homework with you to Granny's. Can you call your brothers and let them know we'll be there for Christmas, please? I'm not calling that money grubber again. You brought up the money that we loaned them? At this time of year? I'm gonna go pack the bags. You couldn't even save him, could you? Hey, John. Coming in. Okay. I'm about to make my way up to the house right now. How's mom? As well as expected. She did love him, John. We won't be there at the funeral. I just can't do it. Do you want to talk about it? You always took his side. I never took anyone's side, John. It's funny. The church never did anything about him hitting us when we were younger. Now the church is hosting his funeral. It's the only church in town, John. Plus, we aren't the judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like, I gotta go. What are you thinking? Why? You're staring at me. I was just thinking that this might be the last Christmas I'll have with you before college. I'll be here next year, hopefully. You might have surgery scheduled next year. That's what always happens. Look, this is a great job. I know you might not like your dad, but at least you got to know your real father. Hey, I do love you. I tried to do this for you, all of you. I know you do. I, I just need some time, that's all. What was all that about? I am totally lost on this fatherhood thing. Well, you are out of practice. I know. I haven't been the best parent. No, I was talking about your packing job. Oh. Yeah. Multitask, man, multitask. Hey, I was having a father-daughter moment for once. Babe, wouldn't it be nice to live here again? We could live right off the square over there and have lunch together like we did in high school and college. Sounds like the old days. Are you guys really talking about that job again? Yes, we are. I'm just saying, it'd be nice to go back over to the Silver Caboose at noon and have lunch together. Wait, you guys used to go over there every day to eat lunch? Mm -hmm. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Hey, Matt, good to see you. Hi, Uncle Matt. Caleb, what is, is that homework? No. You need help? When you're able to. I'll get the bags. You guys can go on and see Grandma, okay? Good to see you, John. It's really good to see you too, man. Listen. The funeral was rushed because of Christmas coming up. It was a shame you couldn't have been there. I was late on purpose. I couldn't deal with it. That's understandable. God has a way to soften the hardest of hearts. Dad changed a great deal. He prayed. He went to Mass. It's like the old dad. Remember him? Yeah. A little too preachy for me, Matt. I think everyone's left. John. I can't remember the last time we were here. Mm. I can't remember a sober father. Yeah. Well, he had his share of demons, Johnny. 
we all do. You know, you ought to go out to the garage while you're here and look at some of those old Christmas videos. Might remind you of the good in your father. I have a video out there titled, If Dad Ever Cared to Watch, and because I know he never did. Your father, the one you refuse to accept, the good one, will surprise you. I don't want to get into this with you, not after 10 years. He wanted you to come home, John, these last three Christmases. He wanted to show you how much he had changed. He reached out to you and you refused to return his phone calls. Not even one. John. I don't want to fight either, Johnny. Good. But I will demand that you accept the fact that he changed and that he loved me, truly loved me these past few years. You'd be surprised at what your father did. Why did you come home, John? Because you needed us. I have wanted a relationship with my son for the past 10 years. Why now? Because he's not here. Well, if you want to know the truth, he was my father. Not being able to share that moment with him it's eating at me. Did you really hate your father that much, John? I just wanted a father who loved me and you know, spent time with me without hitting me. And how is running away from everyone and working yourself to death, working out for your wife and children? I can't do this right now. Sorry. Remember our first date? The soda pop stand? Yeah, it's romantic even after all this time. You think we could do that again sometime? Like we used to? Yeah. Do you remember that night when you took me to the gazebo and we danced to imaginary music because you couldn't afford a CD player? We were so young then. I don't remember. How about going back sometime this week? We could bring music this time. You used to have a way of just making everything romantic. Do you remember the night when you proposed? Yeah. I'm trying to force myself to be here. There's a lot on me right now, you know? I'm getting a text from one of my partners about a patient I worked on. Can't you let them handle it? Well, they could, but... They could, but you'd rather handle it yourself than talk to me right now. My job demands perfection. Here, or this happens. I have to be perfect. I could have saved him. I'm sorry. Too much. Too soon. I know it's hard for you, but I just want you to be here with me. Yeah. I know. Pray over this house a lot. Usually the ones that need it, especially today. What's this? 
It's the St. Joseph prayer card. Patron saint of fatherhood. Don't you think we have enough St. Joseph statues around this house? Do you have something against St. Joseph, John? Nah. I find it ironic that this man had this saint all around this house. It has a lot to do with pertaining to his faith. Yeah, okay. Do you really pray? Yeah. I think about praying. That's not the same thing. Well, I am praying. You know, about thinking about praying. About things. About that job? Sure. You don't need it back? Don't worry about it. You should see how many prayer cards I have. I'm not moving back here. You haven't prayed about it? I've thought about it. <laughs> let me be. Again, that's not the same thing. Again, let me be. I'm just saying. You're not helping. Okay, I'm letting it go. Can't get here earlier. There's a lot of bills we're having to go through for mom and the company. Yeah, I bet. John? James? Let me show you guys in the house. Nice to see you again, John. Come on, kids. You too, Mary. So that's Uncle John? We've never met him before. Is he really an uncle or just a friend? Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> I really am your uncle. That's what happens when you never come around. Don't start. About it. James and Mary have taken over the family business down on the square yeah. since John Sr. was getting too sick to get out of the house. Okay. It's been busy. Oh, you could say that again. Why is that? Well, James decided to pay down a huge debt to an investor. And when I say it has eaten up all of our funds for running the store, I mean, the rent is up. I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, God, let's not talk about Christmas. It's gonna be pretty tight this year because of us paying this money back. But you know what? It should work. I thought the company was doing so great. Oh, it is, it is. It's just a huge hit, you know? But we work hard, we pray, and it's gonna be fine. Yes, it will. Well, I'll definitely be praying for you guys. And you. I'm sure everything will be fine. You know, John's home. It's been really nice having him here. Sure it is. Go easy on him, Mary. I will. Don't worry about me. How have you been? Been good. Good? And you? Okay. So do you need another loan? You seem to have a lot of bills. I'm not made of money, James. Here we go. Well, you always talk about money. No, I don't. You do. I said I'll be paying you back, John. Just not right at this second. I believe it when I see it. John, I love you, but you need to get off your high horse. You're not perfect, and you shouldn't expect everyone else to be as well. You had a great opportunity to make a lot of money at that other job. And I chose my family, John, and that's something you don't know anything about. I don't want to talk about this. You're the it. one that brought it up. You're the one that owes money. And I wouldn't have taken the money, John, if I knew you were going to hold it over my head. I said it's coming. Just not today. I will believe it when I see it. I'm so sorry about John Mary. He has no idea what's coming to him. It's a rough time for everyone. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Looks 
Looks like John is leaving with Matt to the square, just like the old days. Yeah, it looks like they're having some fun in between arguments. <laughs> <laughs> it's a refiner's fire up in here. Is it hot to you? <laughs> Boy, those kids can get at it like I've never seen. But it's good to get stuff out in the open. It's hard when a man you love doesn't seem to show the same love back. Mom, that was uncalled for. Really nice outfit, Gigi. I know. I make this look good. <laughs> it does seem like he works and cares more about work than me sometimes, but I know that's not true, you know? How are you doing? Well, he's here, which is a huge start, but could definitely be under better circumstances. Oh, sometimes it takes the worst things for God to get our attention. It's just, I pray so hard, but, but, do you pray for your family? <laughs> We're Catholic women. We pray all the time. Plus, have you seen our men? We prayed both our husbands to heaven. We prayed long and hard. <laughs> Let us show you something. Yeah, Jessie, come on in the kitchen. What are you doing, Caleb? Having issues, man. Having issues. They won't let me bring my homework. This is borderline child abuse. You're nuts. This is Christmas vacation. Have you ever wanted to pull your hair out because you can't do something or be something? Maybe if you could be something or do something else, it would all be different. Doing something, being something else. You're speaking in code, dude. My dad's here. I want to hang out with him, but I never really have. I try to be the best at school because being the best at everything is all he really seems to care about. Our dad is always around. I wouldn't get onto a dad who's still around. Come on, we're gonna go play outside. Wanna come? Sure. Since when did dads start selling Christian cowboy outfits? It's a cross on a boot, John. I would've called it a whole outfit. But it started a little after his hair started going. Really let work get to him. Drove him to drink. I know. I was there with you. And Dad always wanted me to take this place over. I just let my anger get in the way. No one's perfect. I chose money. I ran right into what I was trying to avoid with all the stress. It smells just like it did 10 years ago. I think I might have become dad without knowing it. We sometimes become the thing we try so hard to get away from. Sometimes we just need to give it to God and live our lives without fear. It's nice to see the place. When my husband's health started to go down, he couldn't walk down the street to the church. So we made this area to pray for our family. We prayed every morning and every night for our family until he passed. That's so sweet. Jessica, this culture of materialism that we live in puts a lot of loving parents in hard places where both of them have to work. 
You could work to live or you could live to work. You could get lost in what you do and think that's who you are. But in the end, the only thing you can take to heaven is your family. That's why family is the only thing that matters, period. You can use this area to pray anytime you want. Or the church is just on the square a couple of blocks over. Really? You don't mind? <laughs> pray away. The one I was praying for after sitting in his chair all these years is dancing today. <laughs> <laughs> Sit my son down. Tell him what's on your heart. He'll listen. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to even get him to spend time with me, much less have an actual conversation. Well, if you don't try now, then when? And if not you, then who will get to your husband's heart? I'll knock him around for you. Here I am, Lord, send me. <laughs> I'm learning a lot about myself this week. More than I thought I would. Good. What's on your mind? Why'd you call me in here away from everybody? I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. I 
It's just some stuff I want to get off my chest. Okay. I've never really told you what it's like not having you at home all the time. And why I want, would like for you to take the job. I don't think I ever really let you tell me what it's like being married to me. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> scared? I just want you to tell me how it is. Okay, let's get it out there. Really? Let me have it before I change my mind. Okay, well, if it gets to be too much for you, just let me know, okay? Is there a safe word? <laughs> you can stop me anytime. Since, since you're never here, I basically feel like I'm a single parent. And it's like having a monster truck running through your head all the time. I get migraines every week. I do everything for our kids. I take Hope to theater practice, and I help Caleb with his homework, and I listen to them tell me all the time how much, how much they want their dad to be a part of their life. As a parent, you give up so much for your kids. Prior time, your alone time, When you're not here, all of that falls on me. It's hard being a good mom to two kids when I feel like for most of our marriage, you haven't even been present. And I just, I feel like I have a one-sided marriage and parent relationship. Just, I'm so tired all the time. And I know you work so hard for this family, babe, and I appreciate everything you do, but just I feel like I'm doing everything and I'm tired all the time and I feel like I'm just waiting for you to get home constantly. The only thing getting me through right now is prayer. It's not something, it's not something I, I feel like I can talk to you about even though, because without you wanting to be a follower, just see, without you wanting to even be a good dad or husband, it gets really lonely. And I get scared and I get overwhelmed. Sorry, that missed a lot, I know. Are you okay? I need a drink. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's too much. I know this week's been hard for you. Just all this brings back so many memories about my parents. I do know that you're amazing. Are you gonna get that? I probably should. Just go. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Outside the house is finally done. Oh, these are for the Christmas tree. Ooh, you might be strong lady, man. Well, since the lights are ready to go because of the miracle hands of my sons, it's time for the annual Christmas tree hunt. The, the great tree adventure kids! Yeah! Babe, if 
you can't get work out of your head, then I think you should just stay here. Read over the contract, get everything done, and just pray about all of this, please. Are you sure you want me to stay? I want you to stay and clear your head. Pray until you have a, a direct answer from God, not a decision from your own personal wants. Why? Because the way of man might not lead to the way of God. The way of man might lead to death. That's one of the verses Uncle Matt was telling me. Why did he tell you that verse? We were talking about you. It's great to know. Okay, I'll try. As long as Hope doesn't quote Matt at me again. Talking behind my back. I was quoting Uncle Matt, quoting the Bible about you. Fine then. As long as Hope stops quoting quotes from Matt, quoting the Bible, talking about her father. Okay. I see you're getting a kick out of this. You're gonna miss out if you don't relax. Since you're going to stay here, you can get the decorations out of the garage. Why not? Thanks. I'll do it. Are you doing okay? I just thought Dad was going to do this with us. He's trying. I'll believe it when I see it. This is the kitchen where the family eats. This is Granny and Grandpa's area. Oh. Hi, Grandpa. Grandma always prays over here, and my granddad always prays for my dad, which is really cool. This is the living room where the family gathers. Grandpa says this is the person who helped him get back to his faith, St. Joseph mostly because Uncle Matt was adopted, and then because my dad adopted me. Grandpa really does respect my dad for that, even though he never said it to him. He said it to me. Hope, oh, you're doing the same thing John did, running around with that camera in his hand and everything like it. I'm surprised that he even still works. What are you talking about, Grandpa? Well, he used to run around with the camera all the time. But I watched the tape many times. Grandpa, 2.0, everybody. <laughs> I love you. Merry Christmas, I love you all. You will understand. You will understand. There's a dad I remember from way back when. Is this on? It's on. Okay. Here's to a father that's always been there for me, even when he's at work. You took me in and I thank you. I just wish you were here. You're a great dad and a good father. I just wish we had more time.
I see you had a rose where your dad gave us. Yeah. So do I. Well, just puts it in my pocket every day. But you keep it around. Why would I keep something in my pocket from a man I despise every day of my life? Maybe because you don't despise him as much as you think you do. And maybe because it stands for something more than a father's inability to be perfect. I haven't been to mass forever. I can always take confession. Then, start going to mass again. Thinking about going to church is not the same thing. And thinking about being a good person and fixing things is not the same thing as actually doing the actions, you know? Who wants to get the tree for me? I'll do it, Mom. I heard that kind of respect from you in a long time. It was awesome. Kayla picked out the tree. <laughs> me and Uncle James made a deal that if I didn't talk about school and getting ahead in life, I got to pick out the tree. You did good and that sounded crazy on the way to get the tree. Yeah, he was great. Uncle James is the best. Yes, he is. Thanks, John. I'll take that. Should have been there, man. Dad, did you get it done? I think so. What's going on with you? What do you mean? You're smiling. This family's been through a lot this week. What's going on? Baby steps. Good. Good. I'll believe it when I see it, Dad. I deserve that. Well, Come bring in the tree. If you know anything about that. There's too much talking and not enough tree getting. Now get.
How long has it been since you prayed? Really prayed? I can't remember. Probably when I took this job. It's just consuming. You can't really enjoy the blades of grass and the fresh air until you stop, get out of the car, bend down, and take a real close, hard look at it. Did the man say that to you? He said it to your father. I haven't seen that smile in 10 years. I know, and I'm sorry. For what? Not coming around. Well, you and your father had some real go at us when you were here. I shouldn't have put you in the middle. I did blame you for letting all that, what happened growing up. I'm sorry. I'm not perfect by any means. Do you remember the parable about the workers in the field? Yeah. It didn't matter how much a person worked, they got the same pay at the end of the day. Exactly. I'm pretty sure that worker wasn't whipping all the other workers, though. John, you have got to let go of your anger. For the sake of your own health. For the sake of your family. Is it just me, or am I the only one that is mad at that? I couldn't even have reconciliation with him. I couldn't even ask him to ask now, for forgiveness. hold your horses, son. He asked for you to come home the last three Christmases, and you refused. I was busy. You wouldn't even answer your phone on purpose. You knew he was sick. He knew he was sick. You're not a knight in shining armor yourself, son. Why wouldn't he say anything? How selfish. I'm a really well-connected doctor. I could have helped him. We could have helped him, and he could still be here. And you would be somewhere else, working. But you're here now, asking questions. Why didn't he let me know? He had a huge ego. I agree with that. He had to be hit with something bigger than his ego to see what really mattered in life. I'm a great doctor, Mom. Why didn't I see it coming? I can spot so much and so many, but not him. Why? Ego, Johnny boy. You are your father's son. No, come Whether on. Whether you like it or not. Do you know that he prayed for something so heavy, so earth-shattering, so brand-moving that you would come home? Why would he pray for that? I thought you didn't believe in prayer. Why would you ask for something like that? He could have been saved. That's where you are missing the whole point. He was saved. You didn't believe in spiritual healing, only physical healing. But you're here now. You're seeking now. He prayed that I would come home because he had died. Who in the right mind would pray for something like that? No, he prayed that God would save his soul and his sons. We don't know the ways of God, John. We aren't perfect. We can't be perfect and know all things. You aren't perfect. Now you can be angry at your father, at me, at, at James, at whoever you want. You can think you're the only victim in the world, but God knows better than you. I could have saved him. Body? Maybe. Soul? No. You're not the great physician. And it's time your ego met something bigger than itself. Your family is falling apart. You're leaving your wife behind. It's time to step up, son. Family is everything, not your work. It's called growing up and owning up to your own actions.
Hey, Dad, can I talk to you? In a few. You take me up on a bet, Caleb. Sure. If you don't have fun, you will get the most expensive gift I get this Christmas. If you have fun, I get your least favorite gift. Cool? Sounds good. Good. You will be the decoration director with Granny. You will also get the star to put on top of the tree. That's a deal. You do have a way with kids, James. Thanks, John. Yeah. You okay? Let's just say something's happening. You know this really isn't a good deal for Caleb. I mean, if he wins, he'll get a great gift from Santa, a box of underwear and socks. I get that every single year. That's your most expensive present. Are you gonna come help decorate? What do you need? Grab some decorations, if you know what those are. Hey, go easy on your old man, okay? You're doing it to me now. Doing what? You're staring. Sorry. What do you want? I was wondering, would you want to go out on a father-daughter date with me? Really? You're too old for that type of thing? <laughs> no, I would love to. Okay then, the soda fountain it is. I don't know. You should go down there and talk to him. He's always busy. I wouldn't really know how to. When was the last time you two talked, like, really? I don't really remember. We're going to go play now. OK. Come on, Kayla. One sec. Is it on? Yes, dear, it's on. Hey. Hey, Dad. Um, if you ever watch this, I just want you to know that I love you. And I wish you were here for Christmas. I wish you were here more. Even with everything that you've done, I still love you, and I still pray for you every night. Is it on? Yes, dear, it's on. John, son, I'm sorry it took an illness to watch this video. I want you to know that I want your forgiveness. There's a lot of damage and repairs, but I won't be there to help you. And I want you to help clean it up. I messed up a lot of things. I started putting St. Joseph's statues around the house to show that he was a great father, where I could be a great man. I want you to have the St. Joseph's statue. You didn't know my father, but he was very abusive, if you can believe that. He worked all the time. I don't want to be like him. 
I want to see my family more. I wish I could have. I want you to realize you don't have to work all the time. Think about your family. Take them with you. That's the only thing you can take to heaven. Learn to pray. Learn to love your wife. Love to learn to love your family. The past can explain your pain, but it doesn't have to control your future. Seeing that. Why didn't you tell me about this? <laughs> he said it was a journey you were going to have to take by yourself. I didn't want to push you. I'm so sorry. John, I forgave you 10 years ago. I'm your mother. So that's where you're going to work? That's it. Wow. That's really close. Yeah. You could walk over and we could have lunch sometime. <laughs> I really like this town. Me too. Really? I thought you were trying to run away from it. Sometimes you run away from something so hard. You turn into something that you didn't want to to begin with. Personal experience. Hey, lay off me for one night, okay? Here we are. John, is that you? This is Jan. Wow, you're still running the store after all these years. I'm not that old, you jerk. It's nice to see a young face in here every now and then. We don't get them in here like we used to. It's really cool in here. Like father, like daughter. Yep. You gonna get a float? Always. I'll try one too. Great. Two root beer floats coming right up. It really is great to see you, John. You too. It's like... I'm stood still in this town. Yeah. Jan helped us with your adoption. Really? How? She knew your mom. Really? Most of the town did. She was a good woman. That wreck set this place back a bit. And a small town feels a loss like that more than a big town does. 
You should have done this a long time ago. Dad, you can't live in the past. The present will pass you by. And if you're living in the future, you'll never live in the present. That's why the present is called a present. It's a gift. And because of that, we can experience Jesus and his mercy. Father Matt? Uncle Matt. Of course. That's a really good one. I think it's a good thought, too. Yes, it is. Look, I will open every door for you. Pull out every chair, take every coat, make eye contact, and give you my undivided attention from now on. I should have done that your entire life with us, but I kind of lost myself along the way, I think. A man's ways might not be the way of God. It can lead to death. And a man's way is just isn't God's way. Is this a Father Matt quotathon? Because I have a few too. Excuse me, who are you again? Shouldn't you be working somewhere? Life gives you curveballs. This was a big one. You really are changing, aren't you? This isn't an act. Losing your dad does something when you want his attention so much and never get it. This week had my number for sure. Does work really get in the way of things? Yeah, it can if you let it. It's like yeah, a rabbit go. hole. It keeps getting deeper. Ah, oh, look at it. So. It really is nice to see you, John. You too, Jane. Thanks for hanging out with me and telling me how you feel. Of course. Glad to do it. You're in for a treat. I bet I can beat you. Oh. Is that a challenge? <laughs> Duh. Oh, you're on. You can beat me. <laughs> I'm already halfway done. Oh, please. You haven't even started. We'll see. The race is on. <laughs> Dad, can you tell me the story about my uncles and granddad? I told you that story way too many times. In passing. You want to hear it again, huh? Why? I just like it because it reminds me of how you adopted me. Okay. Where do I begin? Your grandpa used to be an amazing businessman, but he was also a sidewalk counselor for the local cultural life group in this close-knit town here. This was before he... Uh... Became a junk? Yeah. And... Uh... And before he got mad at the church for not helping him with everything that went wrong. Am I telling the story or are you? I'm sorry. Proceed. There was a lady that needed help. And your grandfather helped her by adopting her son. He and grandma named him Matthew. We call him Matt. Like the apostle. Yeah. yeah as a Catholic, families are supposed to have natural family planning. So if you have 12 kids, you have 12 kids. You know, it's God's choice. When you aren't able to have your own, it's like you owe God something. You know, like there's a debt. Well, Matthew was a tax collector. Am I telling the story still? Sorry again. Why Matthew? You know all this, Hope. I know, but I like hearing it. They felt like they owed God a debt. So they gave it to God and named him Matthew because they wanted to show God they understood it was in his hands. So James came and then you came. Then we came. Your grandma always said that when they found out they were pregnant with James, there was this huge sound of thunder. You know, like God was blessing them with joy. And that's why they named you John. James and John. In the Bible, they're known as the sons of thunder. And that's why they named me Hope. You are my hope, baby girl. We took you in. You were our first, and we didn't think we'd ever have a child. You gave us hope in those years where we needed it the most. I love how you say 
that God doesn't say oops. James and John were meant to be, and so was I. We're a family with God. We're the human race. I don't think you can be a Christian without believing that. Merry Christmas, Dad. Yes, it is. Merry Christmas. I thought you said happy holidays. Not anymore, kiddo. Not anymore. Man, I sunk my own battleship again. Do you have a second? Do you have any time yourself? Sure. One minute? I came in here to talk to you. Is it okay if I talk? Of course. Can you spend more time with me? Sure. How will you? With your job, you'll never be home. Look, if I quit working so much and spent time with you at night, would you calm down? You're a smart kid. You can run circles around me. You think so? Don't be too excited about being the best at everything, okay? Just try to be the best you that you can be. That's a deal. Can I ask a question? Okay. If I hugged you, would you hug me back? Just a hug? That's it? I don't remember the last time we hugged. Yeah. It's a good deal, buddy. John, I really don't want to do this right now. We need to talk. I've held off on you long enough, mister. Mary, look, you need to hear me out. We have talked, and I told her she could talk to you. Okay, but I really need to say something. Oh, you've said enough for the last few years, mister. Because I am a good Catholic wife, I know my place. I know where I belong. It's beside my man. You know where you belong. What's going on? Do you know where you belong, John? It's beside your wife with your family before work. Or is it always going to be work first before family with you? Mary, <laughs> she's out of control. I'm sorry. We didn't have Christmas presents because we were paying back a loan. We told you the money was coming. You kept hounding us even after we told you the money was coming. I really need to. We don't want to make you unhappy now, John. Well, now it's your turn. You want to know why bill collectors are hounding us? Why debt collectors call us every day? No. Why your family's home is in jeopardy is because he puts you first higher before the business all the time. We always put family first. I think you need to... We were paying you back, John. Yeah, during Christmas. We just had to wait for the last of the Christmas sales to go through. Now you know. Quit lording it over our heads. Family comes first with us, John. And I know now it doesn't with you, but it does with us. But you have your money now. We would rather close shop than to owe you one cent. So, there's your money, even though you don't need it. Is this true, James? I don't need it. I needed that, Mary. <laughs> Look, I've learned this week that I've not forgiven where I've been forgiven. So, uh, where much is forgiven, much is required. Give your kids a good Christmas. And keep this place in good shape. You would have made Dad proud. <laughs> Are you okay? I've never been better. Look, I know I need to ask you two for forgiveness. And there's a lot of cleaning up to do. Can I be the brother that I promised I would be? You remember. Now I feel bad. Hmm. <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> but it was a little much. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a tad. <laughs> so 
Sorry, did you want in there? No, I was coming to talk to you. Oh, what about? I want to thank you for all you do for our family. Okay, thanks. And to apologize for not being there for you and our children when I had a choice. When I could simply choose between extra hours at work or to be with you. When I could take another job for more family time and not choose it. I watched the Christmas tapes. One labeled, if dad cares to watch this. Oops, Dad. No. No. I had a tape titled the same thing for my dad. Hmm. He recorded a message after the footage I shot. He left a message for me. Just for me. A crazy week, haven't you? To say the least. I've been holding on to something that doesn't exist anymore. I tried to stay away from the kids so I wouldn't become abusive, and in the obsessive staying away, I became neglectful. You were right. But working too hard? About the job in town. I'm going to take the job. Really? Yeah. Is that what you want? I want time. I want my kids. I want you. I don't know what to say. You've placed yourself in God for so many years, praying for me to come home. I guess I'm asking if I can come back to God, where you've always been, and ask for your hand one more time. Yes, of course you can. Are you trying to give me a heart attack, Dr. Harper? Never. Will you dance with me tonight? Like we used to. Yeah, yeah. Like we used to, but better. What do you mean? I know what I'm missing now. What's going on with you? I want to be the man that loves his wife the way she deserves.
This Christmas is special for my family. A few days ago, our earthly father went to be with the Lord. For the first time in a long time, my earthly father is dancing during this mass in person from above. Some of you knew him after he came back to God, after he gave up drinking, and also when he found love and forgiveness. I know some of your families have come for the first time in a while to this parish, to this candle visual. Some of your families aren't able to make it tonight, but family is what this night is all about. Christmas is the time for hope. Hope came down as a child. He was God and he was man. He was alive and protected in the womb by his mother and father. And when he was born, people didn't want him to exist. Jesus was an inconvenience to a very young girl. And it took St. Joseph and Mary being strong in the great face of great mockery. Before they were married, Mary said yes, thought of others first, and said yes to this weighted journey of being blessed mother of our Savior. Christ, Mass, the worship of Christ, which means our living struggles can't really match up to what Jesus has conquered for all of us. Family issues should stand no chance to the love and grace and loving so much he has come down to give us hope, hope. That is how my father remembered who he was. Over the years, I learned that my God can do all things. All things can be made new. Lives can come together. Love can heal all pains through prayer, only through prayer. And for my family, Christmas has always a time of faith, hope, and love, no matter what. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time Silver caboose at noon Just it's like old time to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be. 